Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, this is Justin here with Horsepower Obsessed. Um, I thought I'd just put together kind of a quick video for you to go over a couple of things to keep an eye out for if you're looking to get a uh, used C7 Z06 Stingray or if you're lucky enough to find a used ZR1, this would all kind of apply. Um, I've had mine for going on a year and I, at that time I did get it for a pretty good price and there was a lot of things that I went over with the people on a couple different Corvette forums, um, a, a couple of personal friends of mine who have Corvettes, just asking them kind of little things here and there, you know, what to look for, what to, to see uh, if, you know, you're, the car you're getting is, has been beat on or if the thing you're buying is going to need a lot of normal maintenance really soon. So this is just gonna be a list of things to watch out for whenever you go to buy a used C06. Number one thing that you're really gonna to wanna to watch out for when buying a used Z7 um, would be to keep an eye on the tires. So there's a couple things specifically with the tires. Number one, um, you wanna make sure they're not bald. Um, if they're bald, at a low mileage especially, could kind of indicate that the person that had it prior to you maybe was doing a lot of track use or possibly a lot of burnouts, um, you know, whatever it might be. Somehow those tires got bald quick. So it's going to be something you're going to want to keep an eye on. If they're bald, odds are good, the, t the car may have been mistreated. Um, another thing that we keep an eye out for is if it's a low mileage car, but for some reason the tires aren't stock so the car comes stock with michelin um, super sport tires or cup 2 if you get the z07 package or the zr1 um, with that being said if those stock tires aren't on there and the car's only got like two or three thousand miles on it that would raise a red flag for me again considering the tires should have lasted longer than that and if they were replaced were they replaced because they were already bad were they you know, used up, destroyed, blown out, whatever the, the, the question may be there. Now, if the tires are bald or if there's some other indication of burnouts or track use on the car, it doesn't necessarily mean run away, don't buy the car. I mean, this is just kind of my own interpretation of some of the things I read about it. And if it were me, I wouldn't want to buy a car that I knew someone had tracked or someone had done multiple burnouts or um, drag racing, you know, anything that would have possibly put excess strain on the drivetrain or uh, messed up the tires or, you know, anything like that. This is just kind of a list to keep an eye out for anything that's going to make it so your brand new used C7 isn't as good as you would like it to be. So, Right off the bat, um, if the tires are good, it might be a good idea to invest in something like this. This, uh, this is just a little tire gauge, real cheap. Get them at, uh, I think I got this at Walmart for like two or three dollars. And it'll tell you, you know, how much tread life you have left. And if it's good, then great. You can move on to the next step, just looking over everything else on the car. Now, the second thing is gonna be brakes. Um, in this case, on my car, I have the uh, carbon ceramic brakes, well, the carbon ceramic rotors. And they're a little more difficult to tell if there's been any kind of abuse on them. But if you're getting a the Z06 or a Stingray with the iron rotors, the biggest thing you're going to want to look for, obviously, number one, pad life. Check. You can see right in here, even on mine, you can kind of see the, the pad in there. You can see... If there's a lot left, great. If not, and it's again, it's a low mileage car, then you might be looking at something that's been tracked or really driven hard. So the next thing you would wanna look for in the iron rotors would be micro cracks. And I'll actually put a picture up to show you what I'm talking about right here. Now, if you have something like the micro cracks on there, that is gonna definitely indicate that there was an excess amount of heat built up in those rotors at some point. So with that being said, you're looking at most likely track use. And again, it doesn't necessarily mean the car you're looking at is destroyed, 
But in my opinion, maybe your money would be better spent somewhere else. So with the carbon ceramic rotors, if you're looking at a Z07 package or the ZR1, they're a little a little more a little more difficult to tell if they've been abused, like I said. So I'll put up a picture of what they look like brand new right here. And now here's a picture of them if they've been really, really beat on or used on the track. So as you can see there, these are considered wear items. So even if you get a used C7 with a warranty, these are not going to be covered items. So this is why you, this is something you want to take a look at. Even if you're okay buying a car that's been tracked, these are still going to be items that you're going to have to pay for to have replaced. Another item you might want to keep an eye out for would be burnt rubber. Um, obviously these cars are rear wheel drive, so this kind of falls under the tire category as well, but I put it as a separate one because it's not directly related to actually just the tires. In this car, I've noticed a lot when someone's doing heavy burnouts or, you know, a lot of things that involve ripping rubber off those tires, a lot of it ends up sticking right in the wheel well here. Or the best part to place to look is right under the rear bumper right in here. And if you get under there and check that out, odds are good someone traded that car in, they're not even going to think to clean underneath. Now again, if you have that, even if you do find the burnt rubber under there and there's some in the wheel well and maybe the tires look like they're replaced, it doesn't necessarily mean the car's totaled, but it is going to give you a good indication of how the previous owner treated the car. So this one's going to be an interior item. Actually, there's two items here. Number one is going to be the door sill. So these cars are a little difficult to get in and out of, and depending on your previous owner, if it was an older person or maybe someone heavy, uh, heavier set, this area right through here is gonna be all scratched up, scuffed up on the plastic, because it's hard to get your leg up in there correctly. And if that's the case, again, it's gonna give you a good indication the previous owner might not have cared as much about the car as you might. Now. Secondly is going to be the driver's side seat. Um, this could be the passenger side as well, but it's more likely to be the driver's side because obviously you're in and out of here more than a passenger is. But this seat right in this area here will start to show a lot of wear and you'll actually see this little rib of uh, leather stitching right here will actually completely wear through to where it's you're literally seeing the padding. I've seen it happen a couple times and it's really, it's, it's a case of not getting in and out of the car properly. You're kind of sliding on that seat every time you're getting in and out and that will rub through. Again, I've seen this covered sometimes with, with GM, but I've also seen some of them get turned away because they're doing it incorrectly. It is a stupid thing to say, but at the same time, I can kind of understand where they're coming from. One more item to kind of keep an eye out for would be um, on the rims. Any kind of scratching, curb rash, uh, this isn't anything specific to the C7 by any means, but um, since the Corvette in general sits low and it has kind of limited visibility inside, it puts this a little higher on the list for potential problems considering other cars you can see a little bit better out of. So with these, Obviously just go around all four rims. Make sure, number one, you got your TPMS sensors on all four. There's no scratches, there's no curb rash, no missing lug nuts. Anything like that's gonna really be a, re a really clear indication that the previous owner didn't really care about the car too much. And again, this isn't gonna be something that the dealer's gonna fix later for you. So if you notice it before you buy the car, maybe they throw in you know a new rim or whatever. So. This is really just kind of a, a list to show you either work these things into the price if you're okay with it or walk away if you see these things. So one more to kind of take a look at. Um, this is more of a, an item to check immediately after you buy it versus before, unless you can kind of work out a deal with having one of those uh, GM service techs take a look at it beforehand. Uh, it, the differential fluid. Um, a lot of the 
forums are actually showing that the, the car itself was allowed off of the assembly line with about a half quarter or so low on differential fluid. So I typically, with any rear wheel drive car I've ever owned, that's one of the first things I change anyway because I've noticed that the factory fill is kind of gross. It's really milky and uh, thick and it, it seems like it has some sort of break-in additive added into it and it's really it's really uh it's not as it's not as clean as it should be so i've always just drained them refilled them and even on this car i did it about a week or two after i bought it and i noticed mine was exactly half a quart low so definitely a good thing to check right after you buy it or have a service tech check it while you're filling out the paperwork for the car one more thing to keep in mind whenever you're looking at the car or working on a price with the dealer is to make sure you're seeing a Carfax. Um, Carfaxes don't always show you the entire history of the car, so it's not a, if the car's got a, cl a good clean Carfax, then it's good to go type thing, but definitely having one of those puts a little bit more of a peace of mind for the purchase. Um, so, I mean, usually dealers will give you that for free, and it's not a bad thing to have, but like I said, it doesn't always tell the whole story. So. Go ahead and ask for it, but don't completely rely on it either. Okay, and then lastly is gonna be uh, body condition. So obviously this one's gonna be the biggest one. This is gonna be one that everybody should be doing anyway, but with the Corvette, given that 90% of it is fiberglass or carbon fiber or the bumpers being urethane, it's a little bit of a different story with this car because other cars are a lot more aluminum and steel whereas this is more fiberglass so a lot of the body panels have tighter of a tighter tolerance with this car um, because of the fiberglass panels and everything so what you'd really want to keep an eye out for as with any car get close to the paint um, kind of look at the reflection of it see if you can see any kind of swirl marks or chips or you know just pretty much any kind of scratching anything like that's going to give you an indication again how it was treated um if if that law looks okay you want to just go through and like with the door the door line here make sure that that's all even all the way through same with the hood the, the bumper gaps the trunk gap um the rear bumper even the the target top make sure that the the gaps all look the same and maintain the same thickness all the way through this could be a, an indication of a prior accident or if paint doesn't li uh, match up, it could be an indication of a repaint for scratching purposes or a wreck. Again, something maybe not determined or shown in that uh, Carfax that you got earlier. Also make sure in the Z07 package car or the Z51 package car that if you're buying it used or even new sometimes, you want to make sure that you're getting all the extra pieces or extra parts that come with the car. Like in this case, these stage three canards, these come with, are supposed to come with the car, but not installed. So these, whenever I bought them, they were in the trunk in the factory GM plastic bag still. Um, you're going to run into that same thing with uh, the wicker bill in the back, which is the, again, this is uh, clear, plastic piece that runs here on the spoiler that's typically not installed from the factory so that should be in the back as well um, with the z07 and the zr1 package you're going to have uh, the styrofoam covers that go on the carbon ceramic rotors you push them in there put them on before you take off the wheel that way you don't risk chipping that rotor so these are things you're going to want to keep an eye out for just to make sure that the car has them whether it's new or used, like I said, I've seen dealers not include this stuff in brand new cars. Because if, if you don't know any better, they're going to get it over on you. And also with the, uh, the C7 Stingray, if you get the Z51 package, you're also going to want to make sure it comes with the brake rotor cooling rings. Literally just these little rings that go inside of the actual gap in the rotor that keeps the air spinning on the rotor rather than going through. So this is another thing you'll want to keep an eye on, make sure you're getting these things, especially if you do intend on tracking or um, any kind of really heavily spirited driving, you, would, you might want to have those in there. So 
definitely keep an eye out. Make sure you're getting everything you should get for the car. Now with this list, these are all things you can kind of check over yourself before the, the time of purchase. So um, this list for me, because I typically buy either brand new cars or cars with very low mileage on them, this list does it for me. If I walk over and check out everything I just advised you guys about, odds are good. If that all passes, the car's in great condition. Um, in some cases though, it might not be a terrible idea, you know, to have them take the car down to a local mechanic that you trust and have the mechanic look over the car. Make sure the drivetrain's good to go. But usually with the C7 being as new as it is, it's, it's gonna be rare you're gonna find yourself in a position where the car you're buying even used is out of the powertrain warranty. So odds are good you'd be covered. You'd probably be good to go either way, but I mean, if you wanna go that extra mile, you absolutely can. Um, but this is gonna be the list. Uh, definitely some good things to keep an eye out for. I've had a lot of people ask me, you know, whenever you bought your car, weren't you worried that you were gonna get a car that someone maybe beat on, maybe tracked it a lot? And I said, well, you know, that's always a possibility. It absolutely is. But if you kind of go over these things that I told you, it, it's gonna lessen that chance by a lot. And you're gonna walk out of there feeling a lot better about your purchase because odds are good you just bought almost a brand new car for way less than what you would have paid brand new. But that's gonna be on my list, guys. So if you liked it, hit that thumbs up. Please share the video if you can and subscribe if you haven't yet. Have a good one.